Okay, um, I've done this before, but I want to do it again because the last one I did was really crappy. And I think we can do this non-crappy. So, um, this was a method that the uh, old masters used to use, and my freshman drawing teacher taught us this, and then he made us do this with old master drawings. We had to go get big books of old master drawings from the library and then take tracing paper and trace over the old master drawings using this system. But I have since done this with photographs and stuff, and um, I think it's a good exercise to get you used to this system. But I, I want to... Um, okay, so I want to teach you this system better than my old video so I can get rid of that old video. Uh, so... Okay, so uh, in this oh, in this system, I should use tools to make these look nicer, but I'm not. Because I want you to see the crudity of it, but then I want you to see it in use. And maybe I'll start doing this in all the videos so you can see it in practice. And it'll help you, if you're learning to draw from your head, to help get your proportions more correct. Okay, so here's my crappy circle, right? Oops. So the diameter of this circle is given a designation of one. That length is known as one. And that circle creates, if you draw that circle in the human body, it goes from the bottom of the crotch out to the edge of the hips. And around like this. And notice how it fit perfectly here on this edge. Like you get the body coming in here, then you get that boom coming out for the hips. And then you, then you get a second bump for when the leg comes out. So it fits that bump perfectly, okay? So bottom of the crotch, up. Some people's belly button is right here. Other people's belly button is lower. Everyone's unique and different, right? But you get the, you get the idea. So that's a one. And that's important because all the other measurements are variations of that one. So if you make, if you, if you bisect this circle and find the center, and then you make an, another you make an oval, okay? I'm messing up that one. There we go. So if you make an oval, that's... Okay, so this is... Not going to be exact. Okay, something like this, right? Okay, so so this oval from the middle of the first circle, this oval is one, whoops. One and two thirds. It's one and two thirds. And so it runs from the middle here up to the clavicle. Okay. Now she's tall and slim, so um, it's going to be a little distorted because of how tall and slim she is, but that's 
that's um that fits there and then <clears throat> if you make a circle up here that sort of that sort of bisects this oval and this circle is one half so it's half the diameter of the number one circle now usually it would bisect but like I said you know this oval is going to be because of her unique body shape this oval is going to be more like this whoops You get the shoulders, okay? And then if you start, um, if you make ovals that start from the midway point here and they're supposed to be well, the way they used to be, the way they were, they're supposed to be I know what they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be one and a half. So they would start here. And go to here. That's supposed to be your thighs. Yeah, that's about right, actually. Okay. So that's one and a half. And then below that, you have another one and a half. for the lower leg and then on top of that I think this one is supposed to be one third that makes up the knee And I know it seems like a weird system, but all these circles in the right places account for the interesting bumps and shapes that, you know, make up for the muscles and everything in the human body. Actually, so this should come down to here. And then this starts right beneath it. And then I think you get a I think the circle for the ankle is one fourth. Then we can come back up here to the arms. She has such broad shoulders. It's so hard to make it work for her shoulders. Um It's so hard to make it work in my drawing. I believe that's a one. Yep. 
So the upper arm and the lower arm. So the upper leg and lower leg are one and a half each. And the upper arm and the lower arms are one each. Of course, um, this is so much in, in foreshortening that, you know, you have to account for that. And even this one is foreshortened some, so you can think about it like a a, a, a a cylinder, right? And the the elbow circle I is also um, a fourth, I believe. So um, those are your basic measurements, and you can you can draw them on on top of photographs uh, to get a sense of how it works. I don't remember if there were tricks for the feet or the hands. There are tricks for the feet or hands, but I don't know if there were for part of this system, and I don't. There might have been something for the neck. I can't remember. Um, I don't remember. I remember this. I remember this part. This is this was enough, or, or this was all that I remembered. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's this. Um, that's this. Uh, that's as much as I remembered from this, because the rest I just used other things that I learned for you know hands and feet and neck and head. But this has always served me well for um, making, helping me to uh, make sure my, you know, general proportions were were correct. You can also remember things that like, um, um, like when uh, when your arms hang straight down, your hands should. Your finger should go to about the middle of your thigh. Um, oh boy, there's so there's lots of other tricks. I'll, I'll try to remember them all as as I do future future videos. Um, but um, that's I don't know. I'll call it the old mas old old masters ovals. Um, I don't know anything else to call it. But but. Um, I'll, I will try for a little while to draw the, after I do the refined video or whatever, at the end of those, I'll try to do a layer that has these, it has this system in place over the torso and the limbs so that you get a basic idea of um, seeing that in action so that you know how that works. Okay, hope this helped. See you next time.